Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. So what, are we waiting for future us to come back in time to write this episode for us or what? What, like Bill and Ted? No. Why not? Context. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Anywho, guys, guys, come on. Heads in the game. It's the fourth half. We're down by love. We need a grand slam to win this basket. Yeah, stop, stop, stop. I'm not even going to begin to unpack what's wrong there. Just but stop. it's the... Stop! But... Okay. Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. I'm leaving. What are you doing? God damn it. Where are you going? To vomit. You guys sort out the script for the podcast. God damn it. All right, well, okay, so what I was thinking for this script, what we can do here is we can just, you know... Oh, God, my What the hell? What was that? I have no idea. But, you know, let's be honest with ourselves. Stranger sounds have come out of Dan before. Oh, yeah. Ugh. So do we want to wait for Dan to get back to write the script, or what? Yeah, let's watch him. Stop. Movie. We can't do that without Dan. God damn it. Well, I'm bored. I'm going to get a drink. Hey, get me a beer. <laughs> oh, Josh, Josh, I got this great idea for script. See, what we should do here is... A Josh? Buddy? Yeah, let's... Uh, never mind. Where does Josh keep that lotion? Ah, there you are. <laughs> let's watch a movie, Tom. <laughs> uh, Tom? I didn't touch it yet! Tell that man to put up his trousers! Nobody wants to see that! Gross! What? Wait, what? Are we in space? <sighs> oh, oh, God! Oh, oh, oh. oh! Sorry, Josh. I was gripping the bottle too tight. Where are we? What's with the floating brains in the jars? What's going on with Dan back there? My Hawkman, long has the moon of Neptune mocked us. Its swirling gases teased with the hopes and dreams never to be found in our waking. And why is my prostate leaking? Is that normal? Oh, don't worry about that. That's, uh, that, that'll go away after a while. Probably. It's the dysentery that sneaks up on you. What? Nothing. So Dan's being mind controlled. It's a uh, standard alien using a human as a microphone scenario, a la Independence Day. What? We have crossed the cosmos in search of those that can lead us in our darkest hour. Now our army of bots have found us, these humans, and with them we shall finally succeed in what has evaded us for centuries. Finish our podcast scripts. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, I guess there's only one thing we can do now. Let's watch a movie, no! guys! No! No! It's my time! It's my turn to say it! Now! Let's watch- Hey, wait, wait! Is that my private time lotion? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Good evening, bots 
Boston listeners! <clears throat> I'm not doing that anymore. That hurts. Good evening, Boston <laughs> listeners, and welcome to another fantastical episode of The Fire Pit. I'm Dan, Jedi name can't do it, and we are in for an adventure in a galaxy far, far away, but not the one you're thinking of. We still have a little bit of a ways to go and as the fire pit strikes back on our way to 1980s, the Empire Strikes Back. Boy, that's a hard line to say. The scriptwriter's an idiot. Before we see just who Luke Skywalker's father is, and I am dying to know, we need to fight a revolution. And as per the rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them onto this one. And now to tell us about what we're watching and who we're watching, I send things over to Tom. Well, thank you, Dan. Tom here, Sith name Darth Stupidious. And last week we watched Alan Rickman go from Grab Thaw's Hammer to a spoon. Opposite Kevin Costner in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Before he squared off with Costner, though, he killed Lord Loxley, played by Brian Blessed in his most subdued <laughs> role of his life, which I will discuss a little bit later. But that is not the case tonight, as he plays Prince Volton of the Hawkmen in 1980s, in the 1980s cult, air quote, classic, Flash Gordon. And to give us a rundown of the film tonight, let's see if Josh can save every one of us. Narrator, he doesn't. But uh, thank you, Tom. Josh here. Bounty hunter name, Klutzo Tripped. And as mentioned tonight, it's all about that 1980s cult classic, Flesh Gordon. Flesh Gordon. Gordon. <laughs> we're not, not watching you. Flesh Gordon. This is a completely different podcast if we're watching Flesh Gordon. I might have downloaded the wrong movie. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> to me, my Hawkman! <laughs> Coming. <laughs> Who wants to live forever? Dive. <laughs> All <laughs> another meaning. <laughs> but no, no, we are watching Flash Gordon tonight, starring one Brian Blessed, Sir James Bond himself, Timothy Dalton, Sam J. Jones, Melody Anderson, and one Max von Sydow. Sido. 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 Max von Sido. I like Tom's the best because I can say it the easiest. But um, he played in Judge Dredd in 1995. But anywho, there was a lot of other actresses and actors in this film and a lot of very colorful characters this side of Oz. This movie was released in December 1980. Had a running time of 114 minutes. Had a box office budget of about 20 to 27 million. And a box office return of about $27 million. Had an IMDb score of 6.5 out of 10. And a Rotten Tomato score of 83%. With an audience score of 69%. Nice. 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 Well, I, I, I want to say that the box office of this particular weekend was not very documented. If you listen to our uh, Jaws episode, I got into the weeds a little bit trying to figure out why the box office numbers weren't really reported a lot prior to the 1980s. And the answer was um, computers. So if you want to hear about that, listen to our uh, Jaws episode. I do go into a little bit more detail that I'm going to go into now. So spoiler alert, what it was is basically computers led to the box office uh, numbers revolution to where numbers started getting uh, reported more and more accurately as the years went on. Before then, it was only really popular movies that the numbers got reported but 1980 to 1983 was kind of the growth years of reporting box office numbers. So you didn't get a really accurate numbers before that. So December 1980, that weekend is reported was only had really three movies. Number one uh, was obviously Flash Gordon. So it premiered number one and pulled in $3.9 million. Now, again, like I said, take this with a grain of salt because this is only specific theaters would have to manually report. They'd have to call in or mail in their numbers and then they would be calculated at another place. There wasn't any computers where they could just automatically send it. That sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, which is amazing that they did like... For Star Wars, it was so popular. Everybody wanted to report how much they were uh, 
making that week and how many tickets they sold. They wanted to send that number. They made sure to keep accurate records. To do that for every movie was a lot of work, but to do it for one movie wasn't that bad. So Flash Gordon was number one that weekend. Um, and number two was Raging Bull. That was the uh, Bob De Niro boxing film, if I recall correctly. $93,000 on that weekend. It was on its uh, fourth week of release. And then number three was The Competition, which uh, I'm not very familiar with right off the top. I think it's a movie. Uh, yeah, I don't know what this movie is. My parents probably will call me and tell me later on. It's like, oh, I know that movie. They always do when I say I don't know a movie. So there's only three films really being reported on. So Flash Gordon, Raging Bull, and The Competition. Competition was also released that weekend. It pulled in 76000 But Flash Gordon definitely pulled in almost $4 million, So still, that's still pretty good considering that's, what, a third? A little over, under a third of its uh, total? No, seventh. Around a seventh of its uh, total returns. Yeah, something like that. But woof, that final box office. Ouch. Yeah, $27 million. So it made, by reports, about... It's budget back, which I don't know what they, if the uh, standard Hollywood practice was to spend on advertising back then, but mm -hmm. I can see why there wasn't a sequel made. Yeah. Well, there are other reasons why a sequel wasn't made either, but I think uh, either myself or Dan might get into that. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I'm curious to know about the uh, metadata about this film, as in, you know, the <laughs> actors and actresses in it and what we can expect out of their performances. Well, so, Dan. What? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's This, this is Tom's segment. Go ahead, Tom. Oh, yeah. Don't step on my toes this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Flash Gordon. Tagline. For years, he's been the last word in professional football. Now he's Earth's only chance for a future. Summary. Star football player Flash Gordon, played by Sam J. Jones, and his friends travel to the planet Mongo and find themselves fighting the tyranny of Ming the Merciless, played by Max von Sydow, to save Earth. I don't know what to make of this film, honestly, team. Just by the metadata, this is a mess. Wow. Uh, okay, so uh, just to start off, this film is based on a sci-fi fantasy property from like um, the like 1930s or so, created solely to compete with Buck Rogers of the 25th century. For those that have never seen uh, Buck Rogers, if you've seen Star Wars New Hope, there you go. So I'm just going to get started. I, I think it really does need to start with the producer here, producer Dino De... Laurentis? Laurentis. Dino de, Laure de Dino de Laurentis. Yeah, thank you, Nigel. This guy's made everything. He started off in the 40s making like some it Italian films like Goliath and the Vampires, which just by that title, I kind of want to see it. But he broke into Hollywood with Battle of the Bulge in 1965. And since then, he's done everything. King Kong, Serpico, Death Witch, Conan the Barbarian, The Shootist... And um, also comic book adaptations such as Barbarella. He's got some sh misses, obviously, The Shootist, Halloween 2. But he had a specific vision for this film, which I sell for Nigel will probably get into. Because now we get into the rest of the cast of this. From the directors to the writers to the actors and actresses themselves. No one here seemed fit for a sci-fi fantasy. Uh, we had our director, uh, who was known for much more grounded films, uh, director Mike Hodges. Again, known for much more grounded films, uh, such as Michael Caine films like Get Carter, Terminal Man, all mafia hitman movies, not a sci-fi guy. The writer Lorenzo Semple Jr., who wrote the screenplay, also not a sci-fi guy. He was an action drama guy. He wrote Papillon, Three Days of the Condor, but he did have some campy stuff under his belt, such as the Adam West Batman TV series and TV movie and the Green Hornet, which comes into play later. With him also was Michael Allen, who did the adaptation, who um, wrote Kung Fu and black exploitation films such as Enter the Dragon and not much else really. So these are guys that also don't have sci-fi 
And for the cast itself, these are mostly unknowns and character actors. Sam Jones, who plays Flash Gordon, practically nothing before this movie, except for like a TV movie named Stunts Unlimited. Melody Anderson, who plays Dale Arden, almost exclusively TV stuff. Uh, Welcome Back, Connor, and Battlestar Galactica, about the only one who has sci-fi credits to them. Max von Sydow, Emperor Ming, Jesus, God, the pedigree in this guy. This is your character actor right here. Greatest story ever told as Jesus Christ himself. The Exorcist as Father Marin. He's got range. You have Topol, who plays Dr. Hans Zardov, who's done biblical stage adaptations like Spiller on the Roof, Galileo. Timothy Dalton, still early, but coming off of a lot of period pieces. He was Prince Rupert in The Lion in Winter before this, as well as in Wuthering Heights. And Brian Blessed... Prince Volton himself, not known for his subtlety at all. Just check out his TV tropes. It is in all caps for a reason. So this is not a cast that was made for this movie. And there was, I mean, there wasn't a lot of drama, but there is some drama, which we'll discuss later, but... Just everything about this film just seems like a goddamn mess. No one in this film <laughs> seems like they were made to be in a cheesy comic strip adaptation. So, oh my god, the meta on this film is, what the shit is this going to be? But I'm wondering if there's more to this film than even just that. So for that, Nigel, do we have any trivia on this film? I do have a bit of trivia about this film. Uh, Not as much as um, I have on some of the other movies for a couple of reasons. One, I've never seen this film, so I've never really studied it. Like I studied, you know, movies like Robin Hood or uh, Ghostbusters 2 or whatever. But there's quite a bit about this movie. Um, Yeah, Sam J. Jones kind of listened to the wrong people about halfway through the production. Mostly his agent team or his um representation team but they kind of sort of told him to uh be a little bit of a prima donna and a diva a little bit and kind of force the producers and director to kind of uh, do what he wants so he picked fights on set and uh just kind of got into it with the producers and then in fact they actually broke production for christmas and he went to los angeles and never came back and they came back and they had about uh i would say a good 15 to 20% of the movie still left to film and they had no choice, but they had to get a body double and dub a shit ton of his lines uh, into the movie to finish the production. He didn't come back. And uh, Dino De Laurentiis straight up said that uh, if, you know, the movie's a success and they do a sequel, he's not coming back as flash either. So it ended up killing his career before it even had a chance to begin with. And he actually later admitted that he made a huge mistake behaving that way. And it definitely sounds like, I guess they, the, his representation team was kind of gambling on him being a huge success, being the next one of the next big things, and he would make them a ton of money, and that ended up not happening. And that's a damn shame because, from all intents and purposes, from what I've read about him, he's a nice guy, and he always he's always really super cool at conventions. He goes a, he goes to a lot of science fiction conventions, and he takes pictures with fans and he signs autographs, and he's always really cool. And if you run into him on the street and you recognize him, he doesn't, you know, tell you to go fuck off or anything like that he it's just i guess this was a really weird time in his life where he probably did think that you know they were getting ready to set off the next star wars and he was going to be the next big thing and it ended up not working out that way but speaking of star wars and flash gordon this is one of the two primary science fiction franchises that inspired star Wars. One is Buck Rogers and the other is this one, you know, flash Gordon was really popular in the thirties, forties and fifties as a newspaper comic. And it had a, um, it did have, a, I think it had a 1930s or 1940s serial series and it was popular. It had comic strips and newspapers and it also had its own comic book. And it was because George Lucas wasn't able to secure the rights to this film franchise because the dealer interest already had the rights to it. That, made him go to go do star Wars <laughs> and he ended up making a science fiction franchise. that's even more successful than the one that inspired him to make it. And speaking of the flash Gordon comics in the original comic strip, flash was a polo player. By the time they were filming in 1979, 1980, when this movie came out, polo was not a very popular sport in America. So flash was updated to play the much more popular sport of football for the movie. 
And this has since been carried over to every other adaptation of Flash, both animated and other uh, television series startups and other versions of them. That's why most people think of Flash Gordon as a football player. I don't know much about Polo, but I don't see a lot of Flash happening no one in does. Polo. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't make him very relatable to the audience because Polo is now seen as kind of a rich person's sport. And it's obviously not a big American sport mm-hmm. at all. And which Star Trek captain played water polo, Dan? Water polo is way different than uh, regular polo. And it was Archer, by the way. But uh, water polo is way different. And he's a starship regular Hey, polo. hey, hey, hey. It has the same name in the title. So in my opinion, they're the same. That's why European football and American football are just the same thing. So go ahead. How to mute Josh. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Other things that this movie's inspired. Jafar in Disney's version of Aladdin, especially the animated version of that movie. Jafar is based heavily on Max von Sydow's portrayal of Ming the Merciless in this film. So if you've not seen this movie, but you've seen Aladdin, like I said, especially the animated version, and you know how Jafar acts, he's very similar, uh, supposedly, to how Sydow portrays Ming. Kind of cool. Um, and then I just have a couple other things. Um, Brian Blessed has been an avid fan of Flash Gordon since his childhood. His favorite character was always Voltan. He said when he played Flash Gordon with his brother and friends in their backyards and on their streets where they were growing up, he was always Voltan. As soon as this movie was greenlit, he campaigned heavily to get the role of Voltan. It was a lifelong dream. It's still his favorite role he's ever played in his entire career. You can tell in his performance. And for that reason, and that reason alone, there's been a remake that's been batted around Hollywood for about the last decade. But for what it's worth, Brian Blessed has promised to kill anyone that tries. (laughs) So I think they're just waiting out for him to die before they can finally remake this film. Why can't they just remake it with him coming back? I, well, for one thing, he's a little old now to play Prince Voltan. But still, I mean, I don't, I don't, I think it's a joke. I don't honestly think Brian Blessed's got a shotgun at the ready to go, you know, take out the movie studio that tries to <laughs> remake this film. But he was on YouTube not too long ago. Like they were asking, like, how would you feel about a Flash Gordon remake? And he's like, I will kill anyone who tries. <laughs> Brian <laughs> Blessed. <laughs> yeah, Brian Blessed. I love a man of conject, a pure, unadulterated conjecture. <laughs> yeah. Conviction, and Josh, you- but close enough. Speaking of the Hawkmen. That's Hawk what I meant. <laughs> and speaking of the Hawkmen, the actors playing the Hawkmen, they couldn't sit down with the wings on them because then they would dig into their backs. So between long takes, um, the actors would actually lie face down. And <laughs> <laughs> lay, lay, yeah, they would lie face down because they couldn't sit. And Blessed had to have a special chair made for him so he could sit. And it had a nickname around the studio as a Blessed Perch. But he is the Prince of the Hawkmen, so it only makes sense. Yeah. And Tom, you mentioned uh, the, this movie was made by uh, – De- uh, well, it wasn't made by Dino De Laurentiis, but it was his studio that made it. Well, his studio is right up there with like Roger Corman's New World Pictures and Charles Band's Empire Pictures, or which later now became known as Full Moon Pictures, as like B-movie cult classic studios. Like they're very popular in the direct to DVD or direct to video bin at video stores or well, now Walmart and all that other stuff. Like they, they've made like Mad Max knockoffs, Vietnam War knockoffs, um, spaghetti westerns, things like that. Like they're all B-movie schlock, but like amongst cult classic fans and amongst B movie fans, th- those are like the big three studios. And it was De Laurentiis's input that uh, kind of pushed this film the direction it went in. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah. It was like, it was kind of weird. Like this franchise inspired star Wars and then the success of the star Wars movie inspired this movie to get made because everyone wanted to capitalize on star Wars when it launched. Cause I mean, it made buckets of money in 1977. I mean, they, the, that's how Star Trek got revived on the big screen was because of Star Wars. But um, like I said, a lot of science fiction success with Star Wars, but they wanted to make this movie different than Star Wars, which is funny because Star Wars was made as a kind of a homage, not a homage, but a, yeah, kind of a homage to this film. It was definitely inspired by it or not this film, this franchise was inspired by it. And then they make this movie, but they're like, well, we don't want it to be too much like Star Wars. So that's why this movie's way more colorful than Star Wars. Like, you know, Star Wars is a lot of monochrome colors, a lot of black and whites and grays. Um, the dirty future. That's what they were going for. Yeah, or used futures, what they like to call it. Used future. And then this this one goes total sci-fi fantasy space opera, even more than Star Wars did with 
bright colors. I mean, Flash wears this bright red outfit most of the movie. Ming has, you know, Mongo, the planet they're on, has got like a pink sky with swirling purple and green clouds. And the Hawkmen wear these like gold wings and gold like armor and, and gladiator like sandals and helmets and stuff. So now I'm getting interested to see this movie. Yeah. I didn't even realize like Star Wars's color palette was so subdued. And then you compare it to like this film. You're like, yeah, well, no, gee, yeah. Star Wars might as well be in black and white when you watch this film. I was thinking the same thing as you're talking about. Like, is that why Lucas made it that way? Because he's trying to make it look like an old black and white serial without it actually being a black and white serial. But we could discuss that if, and when we ever get it. So what are you hoping to get out of watching this film then? Uh, I, like I said, I've never seen this movie. I know about it. I know the beats of the story. I, I really want to see not Star Wars. Because that's what I I took away from this when I was looking up the trivia for it was that this franchise inspired Star Wars, but this movie was inspired by Star Wars. So, or at least the, the, the production of this movie was inspired by Star Wars success, but they also wanted to make it as radically different from Star Wars as they could. So I want to see something that is made around the same time as Star Wars around that big science fiction craze, but is radically different from anything else. Do you think you'll like this film though? I think I will get some enjoyment out of it because of its cult and campy status, but I don't know if I'm going to like it. Like, like, like it, like it. So where were your expectations? Are they high, low, medium? They're medium. From, from what I read about it, it's a bad film, but it's a good and bad film. So I think I'm going to get some kind of like enjoyment out of it in the sense of like, I'll enjoy watching a bad film, but I don't think I'm going to like love it. I'm definitely not going to come out of this thinking it was the best movie ever. This is an underrated gem. If you survive it, you'll be happy. Yeah. So you'll like it in the way that most of us like Troll 2. No, God. Ugh. Maybe. Maybe. Although I, I think this movie's better than Troll 2 as far as like the reviews go. Like Troll 2. Well, yeah, I think tr- most movies are better than Troll 2. Low bar. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really know what my expectations are going in. I don't know. I I mean, I've been looking forward to watching this film all week, and I don't know that much about it outside of the Brian Blessed scenes in the Queen soundtrack, which, funny enough, Dilo De Laurentiis had no idea who Queen was when they proposed when they asked him if Queen could do the soundtrack. Okay, so that has yet to. This is new information for me. How is it we've gone this far into this episode and I have yet to know this? Oh, yeah. That Queen. You don't know that Queen did the soundtrack? I did not know that Queen did the soundtrack for this film. It's one of the two major movies of the 80s that Queen did the soundtrack for. Yeah. It's like they they did the soundtrack for this first, and then they did the soundtrack to Highlander, which I always thought was flipped around. Because, like, after doing the soundtrack for this, I figured they'd be like, nope, no more. But no, they're like, yeah, Highlander, why not? And we've got to do better. (laughs) We have to do better. We we can't end our Hollywood movie soundtrack career on Flash Gordon. No, actually, Queen is so proud of doing this film. It's one of their favorite experiences ever as a band um, doing this. They had a lot of fun making this Highlander soundtrack, too. And they knocked both out of the park. So even if you don't like the film, Dan, you can at least say you like the, how it sounds. I know I'm going to like the music because I, I, like I like Queen, so... See, I'm hoping to at least get that much out of it myself, too. If you don't, So what are you uh, expecting, then? Beyond the music, of course, Tom. Uh, I don't know, guys, either. This, there's so much infamy going in this, this film. We all have friends who are like, oh, you're going to watch Flash Gordon? You need to watch Flash Gordon. It's so bad. Or it's so cheesy. They never say it's so good or you love it. It's I have a lot of bad taste in my mouth from past films that are supposedly so bad it's good it's no it's either you make a film competently or it's incompetent and that's the difference between like say 1990s captain america and the adventures of buckaroo bonsai buckaroo bonsai is corny and cheesy but it's competently made and fun it's made for the people that like that kind of corniness. Captain America 1990 was just bad. If you take a film like Buckaroo Banzai out of its the context of the time it was made and a long enough timeline, you can see it for the film it is and wanted to be 
and enjoy it. Even yeah. if the audience for which it was made at that time didn't, but a shitty film will remain a shitty film. Captain America, still a shitty, incompetent film. Dead Calm is still a shitty, incompetent film. I'm worried that this is going to be an incompetent film. I mean, even the director, or writer, excuse me, writer and director were told to make this a comedy. No one in this was going to make it a comedy. That, but De Laurento said, "I want wacky. I want a, I want a comic strip on on the big screen." And they even said they they regret that decision. I'm just going to say I'm buckled in, guys. I don't know what I'm going to get out of this, but I'm worried that my expectations have been built. That's going to be fun, cheesy, like Buckaroo Banzai, but it's going to be more. It's going to turn out to be dead calm for me, only with a lot more color. But what about you, Josh? Um, what are you expecting? I'm honestly expecting Troll Two. <laughs> So, oh, I'm not expecting it to be that bad. Oh, wow, Josh. Yeah, I have zero expectations. If I come out of this film and I think, oh, that wasn't terrible, I might watch it again. I would consider that a win. Nothing in my life has ever driven me to see this film, even after I watched Ted. Just everything I've read about it, the short clips I've seen about on the internet, stuff I've just heard about it. Um, nothing has ever made me want to see this movie or even consider seeing this movie. Like, you know, you have those movies where you look at them and you're like, or you hear about them, you're like, okay, you know, I could see myself putting that on my list to watch eventually. People like have said, yeah, I, I like Flash Gordon. It's a good movie. You ought to give it a shot. I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah, see, that's, that's I don't know. Like, I think this is the first time in a while we're going into a movie where neither of us have seen it. What was the last movie that we went in on that we ha- all hadn't seen? Mm-hmm. I think uh, it was scary stories to tell in the dark. Yeah, it's been a while since. Uh, oh, it couldn't be that one. Oh, it couldn't have been that one. Well, technically, technically, uh, Flight of the Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, we none of us had seen the original, but we'd seen the remake. I'm trying to go through. Uh, there was the original. Um, uh, true. Grit. Shootist. And no, Shootist was. Uh, yeah, the Shootist. I think none of us had seen. I had seen it. No, I. I had seen the Shootist. Oh, uh, you've seen it. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it's been a well while since none of us. Holy have seen crap! That. Yeah, that is. Uh, so maybe it has been Flight of the Phoenix, or the Flight of the Phoenix. It was the last time we've gone into a movie where neither none of us have seen it. That's a failure on our part. Holy shit! Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not saying no. I don't. I wouldn't say it's a failure, Josh, because we've gone through movies where like two of the three of us haven't seen it, or one of the three of us haven't seen it. But it's just been a while since it's, we've gone into a movie where all three of us haven't seen it. And yeah, every time we do, it usually ends with us hating the film. Yeah, <laughs> we did. We did. So, but yeah. So my my expectations are on the floor. Unless I stub my toe on it as I go over it, I won't be disappointed. But I don't think I'm going to like this movie. And I'm not just saying, trying to judge a book by its cover, but I totally am. I don't think I'm going to like it from a movie standpoint. Like, I don't think I'm, I'm not, yeah. this is definitely not going to resonate with me in the same way that the movies I love dearly and hold close to my heart will. I just, I think I'm going to enjoy mm-hmm. the experience of finally seeing Flash Gordon. Cause like I said, this is a cult classic, but um, I don't think I'm going to enjoy the film. No I'm not going to enjoy it as a film. I'm going to enjoy it as an experience. <laughs> like a root canal yeah. or a prostate exam. Oh, God. But uh, no, um, back to my expectations. Um, you guys are just great at uh, helping me with that part. So thank you. You're welcome. I, I really appreciate you guys uh, helping me out with my expectations. But uh, no, it's like I said, I don't, I'm not expecting a lot out of this film. I don't think it's going to be that good objectively. I don't know if I am what, the type of person to really enjoy cult classic films. Like I would watch Troll 2 again just to subject somebody else to it. But like one of my absolute favorite movies, and I say favorite very, very, very conservatively, is uh, Hard Ticket to Hawaii. I haven't seen that movie since, what was it, Tom, 2008? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, God. Like, I think it was me and you watched that movie like shortly after we started. I think it was even before I met Dan. Mm-hmm. And I will tell you that that is the worst movie you'll ever see. It's terrible, I but I absolutely love it. I haven't seen it in like over a decade. So I think if I like this movie, 
um, I may say, I like this movie, but uh, I probably may not ever watch yeah. it again. Like, I we might watch Hard Ticket to Hawaii after I convince you guys to let's put this as a destination film at some point in the near future. Mm -hmm. Far future. Future. But uh, I don't ever plan on actually loading that movie up and watching it just even as a background film. <laughs> <laughs> it's this whole it's this whole category unto itself it is it is and uh i know you guys shared a couple of air quotes review pot or uh youtube play things where they watched that video mm -hmm. or that movie and re-watching that was enough for me my hard ticket to hawaii thirst has been sated for the next decade <laughs> But uh, no, no, that was a bad movie. And I'm kind of like expecting this movie to be on par with that in terms of my overall enjoyment of it. Ooh. But uh, that's my overall enjoyment of it. I am going to segue this and hopefully not die on this segue to uh, other people's enjoyment of this film. So hopefully, if I can draw this out long enough, I can give Dan plenty of time to finish writing the quiz. So I finished it an hour ago. Ooh, I love that. Nice. What do, you, what do you think he is? Some kind of Republic serial villain? He did it an hour ago. Ah, Ozymandias. Just FYI, we started recording an hour ago. <laughs> All right, Dan. Well, I guess I'm going to just go ahead and hand the mic over to you. The floor is yours. Oh, thank you, Josh. Thank you. Uh, now we're going to do trivia. Standard format. Um, I'm going to read a line or two from a movie review. And you guys tell me if it's a one through ten. Sounds um, easy enough. And the first one um, to be a Tom wins automatically. What do you mean the first one to be a Tom? As in Tom wins automatically. I, Tom's I trying to be clever again. Oh, that must be why I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, edit that in. But... <laughs> uh, I will let Tom go first, though, because I pity him. <laughs> Yay. All right. Let's see here. There is plenty of cheese to go around in this film, and it is worth the time to watch it. Ooh, that sounds like a niner right there. Josh? <sighs> Round in this film. Uh, I'll play it safe and say eight. Ass. Josh, don't do this tonight. Don't lose to Tom. Is it a 10? It's a 9. Oh, my oh, God. Tom got, it, Tom got it right on the money. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's what you get for trying to price his right me. Oh, you knew it. That's my thing. The gods are going to punish you for this, Josh. Right. Well, I know. They punished Dan. <laughs> yeah, they horribly punished me for like three weeks in a row. That was amazing. Uh, let's see here. Just don't be a shutout. Just don't be a shutout. All right, Josh. I saw Flash Gordon in December of 1980, and it was okay. In 2020, it is so bad. Actually, there is nothing good about this movie except for maybe the main score. Um... Let's go four out of ten. I'm going to say one star. Josh is closest. It is a three-star review. Ouch. Ouch. Oh, I almost went with a three-star, too. But yes, nice. All right. Two to one. All right, Tom. I should rightfully say that I do enjoy some camp. Dune is my favorite bad movie of all time, and it's truly awful. But Flash Gordon makes Dune look like the Empire Strikes Back. Oh, dear God. Um, that is a hard one. Holy shit. Yeah, this could be... I'm going to say a three star. Because I'm like, some people absolutely love Dune. Which Dune, though? Uh, this, uh, The way this review, the rest of the review, he's talking about the original uh, 1980s Dune movie. The, mm. yeah, they the have one with remake. Patrick Stewart and Sting and all that. The new one that has was a, the remake, wasn't it? No, no, that wasn't the remake. The remake's on its way out. That'll be out. No, no, no. Time. That the, the one that came out with Patrick Stewart was a remake. There was a Dune made in like the 50s, wasn't there? No. Oh. No, Dune was written in the 70s. So. I thought there was an older movie. No. Now you're going to make me look. I could have swore there was two movies. Not there yet, is not. There will be. There's a Dune, be. and then there's a Children of Dune TV miniseries, and that was it. So far. But you're stalling, Josh. 
Tom said. Oh, you said it was a what? A three? Tom said three. Um, fuck. I'll say four. Tom is closest. It's a one. Uh, I, I knew I should have went with a one. Okay, I'm still winning. All right, all right, all right. Three to. I mean, it's not a shutout, so I'm still doing better than Dan did for the first two weeks of this journey. You are. <laughs> this is true. You are. Also, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, give him a curveball for this one. Okay. Uh, okay, Josh. Too campy for its own good. Is this a line or the title? Um, that's actually the title. Too campy for its own good. Let's go three. No, yeah, three. Dang it, I was gonna go with that one. I'll go five. It seems like a, it's probably a six, but I'm gonna go say five. It's actually a four. Oh. So no points. So no points. All right. Balls. Yeah. You know, I should have done that. I should have went with the four just to screw with you. Surprised you didn't. I should, in hindsight, but again, it seemed too middle. It seemed like almost a seven reveal, to be honest, but that's what I get for doubting. All right, Tom, I got, okay, yeah, I got a couple more here. Um, well, I think we, this is the this is the last one right here. If I get this right, I win. Well, if you get it right, you win. If Josh gets it right on the money, he ties, and there's a tiebreaker. Oh, there. oh, I see what you say. You got a couple more here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you get it right, you can win. But if Josh gets it right on the money, then there's a tiebreaker. Okay. Yeah. So, Tom, this movie will make you wonder why Star Wars movies have to be so boring aside from their special effects. Wow. Is that the title or part of the review? Part of the review. You make you wonder why it's boring except for the special effects. Shit. Oh my god. Say that again. Oh, go ahead up. This is a tenner. This is a ten. Say it one more time. This movie will make you wonder why the Star Wars movies have to be so boring aside from their special effects. Tom said ten. Uh, I think Tom's right. I'm gonna go eight. God damn it, guys. It's a fucking nine review. Can't one of you say nine? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't I price this right him? <laughs> God Go damn it! That's what you get for being nice, Josh. <laughs> you, uh. you, you, honestly, yeah, I was like, honestly, I was expecting Josh to say, I think Tom's right, but I'll go with nine. And he says eight, and I'm like, God damn it, Josh. <laughs> no, I was expecting... <laughs> I, I didn't know. I, I figured it was an eight, actually, but I knew I was, was about like, to. Bre- I was about to bust out a Brian Blessed. For fuck's sake! Well, you just did. I did. All right, all right. Well, we'll just go with the tiebreaker question then. No, and we then, won. I, uh, I win. I win. I win. I win. I do. I lose. I win. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we can do that. <laughs> I mean, we can give us a tiebreaker. I'm curious about the tiebreaker. Brilliant. Rubbish, but brilliant. Ten. Nine. Tom would have won today. <laughs> God damn. I was not on my game. Tom's well, got the trivia next week. You didn't get shut out by him, though, so you're still ahead of me in the game. So Yeah, I did lose by six. So Yeah, this is yeah. one of the lower, <laughs> lower scores ever. What was the score? It's like two to... <laughs> three to one. Three to one. <laughs> three to one, actually, because Tom got the first one right on the money, then he got the one after that. Then you scored one, and then you all got with it. You just... None of you would... You refuse to score a point after that. <laughs> well, I uh, am slightly annoyed. I'm not mad. I'm slightly annoyed. A little bit of humiliation and shame for losing to Tom. But um, all I got to say to that is Tom, play the music. Welcome back to another revolutionary episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and interplanetary savior, Tom. And not to rush you all, but we only have 14 hours left to save the universe. Wait, that can't be right. Hang on. Damned spring forward still has all of my clocks off. Oh well, I'm sure we'll figure it out. But thank you for saving every one of your hours to join us here at the Fire Pit. We're diving off to planets unknown as the Fire Pit Strikes Back on its way to the Empire Strikes Back. Just one more stop after this, then we'll finally be in the swirling sea of the galaxy far, far away. But speaking of far out, I wonder how the team is handling their own galactic 
adventure. Let's find out. Hurry! We only have 10 minutes to save the podcast! We're typing, we're typing, jeez! <laughs> Damn, Dotto correct? He helps her get an organism! Organism! To me, my Hawkman! God, if he says that one more time. Okay, Tom, help me with this punchline. Tom, we've got these two characters. There's an obstacle they need to overcome. Oh, 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 I got it, I got it. We'll use a callback. What we need to do is a... Oh, oh God, the dysentery! Oh, God. Oh, God. We have ten seconds! Wait, I thought we had ten minutes. Space minutes! Oh, Jesus Christ. Dramatic effect! It's okay. Okay, I think I can work this out. Wait, dysentery. Space dickin dysentery. Dickentery. Ha-ha! I got it! Done! <laughs> well, who wants to live forever? My Hawkman dies! We record the podcast! Did we make it? Clearly you didn't, but we made it. For the first time ever, nothing went wrong. Oh my god, they, they actually got one right this time. I, I, I guess there's no reason to stick around after the end of the episode. Story's over. Wow, <laughs> hey, good job. But if you do want to stick around for a nice discussion after the episode or just want to discuss ideas or ads for future episodes, feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put fire pit in the subject line as well as the reason for your email whether it's to commission an ad recommend a destination comment on a journey warn us of an impending invasion from ming the merciless and let us know what you have going on from there we'll read it rock it off to planets unknown organize an interplanetary revolution against a power mad dictator have a theme song written about our exploits and never respond. The song says save every one of us, not respond to every one of us. That's just not as catchy. But that email again is curtain call entertainment inc at gmail.com. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I at gmail.com. Huh. Normally this is the part where things go horribly wrong and I have to chase you guys out so I deal with it. Huh. You know, I'm just gonna stick around here just in case worldwide devastation happens ahead of schedule. And let you get back to the episode anyways. Thank you all for listening. And, as always, good luck. <laughs> And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. Okay, I feel like an hour into this movie, I shouldn't be asking this question. What's a Mongo? That's the planet they're on. They're on a planet? I am so confused. Everyone's confused, especially the people in this movie. Hold on! Clearly Queen's finest poetry at work here. That's how you know he's rich in the 1980s, is he has power windows. Man, these effects are awesome. <laughs> it's so realistic. Boy, they were right when they're saying they're not going to do it like Star Wars. <laughs> get my off this. I'm going to be in a movie with Chuck Norris and Luke Gossett Jr. Okay, crash their plane! <laughs> <laughs> it's Brian Blessed! Hello? No, that's not Brian Blessed. Oh, damn. That's Brian Blessed. That's so... No, neither of them are Brian Blessed. Not everyone with a beard is Brian Blessed in this film. That's an outright lie. You shut your whore mouth. Hi, we weren't just talking about you and how crazy you are. Oh, you have a gun. Oh, oh awkward. You can tell Ming is surrounded by yes men who will not tell him he doesn't look good in that outfit. Hey, are those eagle guys?
Whoa, those guys are yeah. dressed like that. Not cool, dude. Not cool. You're appropriating Hawaiian culture. You guys are appropriating Munchkin Wizard of Oz culture. No, what? those are those little packages of gummies you get. Oh, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> and I don't even yeah, I don't even want to begin to unpack the six shades of racist this guy is. I'm from Asia. Which part? <laughs> All of it. Yes. <laughs> Guys, guys, there's scenery enough for everyone to chew. Wait, what? Hold up. What? Hey, no. What? Was that the Infinity Gauntlet? So we got cheap ass Infinity Gauntlet, cheap ass Doctor Doom. This really is the MCU on Wish. <laughs> this movie is uh definitely terrible. colorful. <laughs> no, terrible. It's, it's definitely terrible. Well, apparently they gave almost carte blanche to the set designer of this film, and he went completely <laughs> crazy and didn't consult anybody. He also spoke Italian, and everybody else spoke English, so he just kind of did whatever he wanted. Well, I want a a dark grayish blue. Ah, okay, yes. <laughs> so why why is it red? Ah, yes, yes. I, I want it blue, gray blue. Ah, ah, mm-hmm, yeah. Are you, are you high? Ah, yes, mm-hmm, yes, yes, uh -huh. Did you, did you eat all of these mushrooms? Ah, yes, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> Those weren't safe for consumption at all. Ah, yes, yes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, and it lands in the water. Oh, that's going to be a minus one. He's going to never make bogey. Tom, Tom. Nigel. In golf, minus one is a good score, and you don't want to make bogey ever. Both of you need to stop with the sports stuff. Flash, are we tripping balls? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hang on. I can I can stay. Yeah, I'm cool. I, I don't have anything planned. Definitely, definitely don't have anything planned. Uh, is she part of the prisoner package? Because, you know, um, I, I, I could basically stay a little bit longer. Oh, she comes with her own midget? Oh, okay. Ooh. <laughs> you had my attention. <laughs> now you have my interest. <laughs> and my erection. Are you sure you didn't get flesh, Gordon? This shaft thing that I'm holding we call a book. Now get in the center, and we shall cocky you on our boo cocky. Yeah. <laughs> For fuck's sake! <laughs> Ow! Ow, you dick! Ow, that really hurt! Oh, stop! Seriously! Can we just go back to swords? Holy actually, shit. actually, actually, harder. <laughs> <laughs> Probably shouldn't have put all your experience points in flip gun shoeless ninja girl. Slash forget the gun and <laughs> yeah. next to the bodies. Yeah, but you remembered your heels, so that's good. I'm feeling safer already. At least you'll look fashionable when we die. You, oh, but the gun you can use, the shoes. <laughs> it works with the Nazi ninjas playing on Oculus Rift. Oh my it's, God. it's Google Glass, but Nazis. Give your father my word of honor. My father has never kept a vow in his life. I can't help that. Keeping our word is one of the things that make us better than you. Ooh, wow, okay. Well, I was over here trying to help, but you know what? Fuck you. Um, you're on your own. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. She's cool. She's better than us. <laughs> hey, he finally earned his theme song. I don't know how, but he got it. Well, they looked at the time on the edit, and they're like, we're about an hour and a half into it. Do you think, yeah, might as well. Time in service. Wait, wait, wait. How much did we pay Queen again? Start the song now! <laughs> oh my god. Hey guys, how can we make this scene better? Well, not have all the Hawkmen fly and spell out thanks, Flash. Oh, dude, that would just be so over the top and dumb. <laughs> Meanwhile, somebody's in the background. Like, oh my god, that'd be a great idea. I'm gonna do that. We owe everything to Flash. But he didn't do anything. What? Contact. You. Are, how are you people so advanced? I hate everybody in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Except Brian Blessed. Lucas is watching this like, it's not worth suing them.
Lucas is watching this going, you guys could have had me. You could have had me. You could have had me make Flash Gordon. And you said, no, we're going to let Dino De Laurentiis make Flash Gordon. So I said, okay, fine. I'll just go make my own Flash Gordon. Ladies and gentlemen, my own Flash Gordon. I merely wanted to live in your kingdom and you forced me to build an empire. Jesus Christ, there's only been 10 minutes since we've commented that we've hit an hour. (laughs) And now, back to the episode. All right, so guys, there was one good thing that happened as a result of watching that movie. No, no, no. no. It's for the podcast. There's legitimately one good thing that went on. Our record of all three of us watching a movie and it not liking it still stands. (laughs) All right. This is us celebrating right here. We are going to make as much Foley as possible. Yes, with chips and bags of chips. Now let me find something I can... Here, let me add to the... Here, here. Yes. This is how we feel about this film in general. Oh, God. Nigel. Nigel. Yes. Do you want to lead us in on these final thoughts? I don't want to, but, you know, it's my turn, so I suppose I'll do it. I just, I'm not going to get a drugged-ass drink that'll knock me out like fucking Dale did. Anyways, um, yeah, I think that this movie is a cult classic because the people who think it's a classic are in a cult. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't see the appeal of this film. I mean, not even as like a, not even liking it ironically in this like over campy kind of way. I mean, yeah, some of the performances are fun to watch. Like I really did enjoy Brian Blessed in this movie. And I really enjoy Timothy Dalton in this movie and Max von Sydow in this movie. But I mean, my God, just I can go, I can find better movies with all three of those actors in it and just enjoy their performances there too. I mean, Timothy Dalton's better than the fucking Rocketeer, for God's sakes. I mean, Jesus. Well, that's not saying much. Rocketeer is a fantastic movie. It is. It it is. It's but uh, this movie, I just don't understand. Like. I, I, I had a couple people this week when I told them what we were watching, I'd be like, oh man, that's a classic. How? Like, I have a feeling most people who say that haven't actually seen it. Exa- or I've seen like the bar- parts with Brian Blessed in it. Yeah, or they, they've only watched like, you could go on YouTube and watch like the final battle with the Hawkman flying into the ship and, and shooting it up and all that stuff. Like that last 20 minute action scene where finally, mercifully, 90 minutes into this fucking film, uh, something's actually happening and Queen's getting their paycheck finally. So it's like, I just don't understand the appeal of this movie. I just, I don't know. This to me was just, it wasn't as much of a slog to get through as say Pathfinder was, or even um, trying to get through uh swashbuckler, but Jesus. <laughs> it's not much better though. I'm, no, 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 it's not much better. I it, it, it mean, it's still a shit sandwich. It's just not as sloppy. But I don't, it just is just, this was bad. I don't, this is bad. This is bad. And if I catch flack for this, for not liking it, fuck you. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, I, I, I don't, I don't get the appeal of this film. I can see why it didn't get any sequels. I can see why it didn't kick off in the box office. And I don't think any of that has, well, I think some of it has to do with, you can tell that Sam J. Jones left the production at some point in time and never came back because there's significant amount of character development from flash missing in this film Mm. that probably that may have gotten done. If had he been on set, had he come back for the Christmas after the Christmas break. Uh, this film has no character development at all. You know, we were joking last week when we were watching Robin Hood that there was more care. There was more character development in that like five minute interchange between Azim and Friar Tuck when they had that whole "Don't talk to this girl because you're a heathen Muslim," and and you know, piss off and you'll answer to me. And then Friar Tuck runs away. And then Azim saves what's her name and, and, and performs the C-section to get the baby out. And Friar Tuck has that moment where he's like, I am, I may be godly, but I'm not wordly or word worldly or whatever. And mm-hmm. yeah, 
So You're- there was more character development in that scene alone than there was in any of this film. We owe everything to Flash. He didn't do anything. It's, well, he showed up. He gave a speech. Yeah. And they said, okay. Yeah, he just he didn't do anything. So I'm not going to ramble anymore. Um, you know, we'll, we'll bounce things off each other here in a minute. But yeah, I have this. my final thoughts of this film are, if you think this is a cult classic, you're in a cult. It's a cult. Tom, you have the floor. You know how I said in the beginning that the difference between camp and shit is competence. Oh dear Lord. Okay. Just again, this film sucked. Ah, this was suck on a sled. There is nothing fun about this film at all. I I see what they were going for there with the dialogue, some of the angles, the costumes, the set designs. They wanted to make this look like a 1940s B sci-fi film. The problem is they wanted to make a film inspired by schlock 1940s B films or films like Plan 9 from Outer Space and wound up making a schlock 1940s B movie and or Plan 9 from Outer Space. You had five to ten minutes of a, air quotes, enjoyable action film and the rest of people going from one place to another. I agree with you, Dan. There's, there was no reason for anyone to get behind Flash. He showed up for one scene, did a stupid football game against the guards, and then died. God, there's too much to unpack what's wrong with this film. I guess what I can say, the least they got, I don't know, I'll save, there's nothing I can say to save this film. Josh, this movie sucked. What do you think? I liked it. I thought it was a good movie. You lie. I do. I lie very poorly. Um, no. Uh, so you know how I said, uh, if I can get a movie that uh, I, I, I will enjoy to just talk and try to recommend to people but not actually watch for a decade, I would be happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not even going to recommend this movie to anybody. Like, I would watch Hard Ticket to Hawaii before I would watch this one again. <laughs> Oh my god! I never thought I'd agree with you on that one, but I agree with you on that one. Oh no! Yeah. Um. So yeah, the, uh, this movie's just not good. All right, let me let me put it like this: I can empathize with people who do like this movie because human beings are a very complex creature, and there is on one very very far side of the bell curve those that probably enjoy this film and think it's a good m- picture. And I can empathize with those people that they find this enjoyable. They also write Transformers as a 10 out of 10. But... <laughs> yes. Like, their only redeeming thing about this movie is the soundtrack and Brian Blessed. And but, Timothy Dalton. Yeah, Timothy Dalton didn't do too terrible. But, I mean, everything else about it just... It's the other thing. It's like the year that this came out, six months prior, you watched The Empire Strikes Back. And then you come into this seeing Flash Gordon. Oh, my God, Flash Gordon. I remember him from when I was a kid. Uh, This is definitely going to be better than Empire. What the fuck did I just watch? Yeah, it's awfully red. Like they had a very red palette. Oh, yeah, it was definitely different from Star Wars in that it made no sense. But yeah, sure. I mean, whatever. It's colorful. It's colorful. It's lots of colors. There's lots of lights and flashes and things yep. moving around. And, and it, it's, you know, bright and cheery and it, it, it's loudness and colors. And I'm not an infant. I don't care about that shit. Like, honestly, I had forgotten because apparently I'd already blocked it out about that football game at the beginning of the film until Tom brought it back up just a few minutes ago. Why? <laughs> yeah. Like... And that's just it. I'm not saying that about that particular scene. I'm saying that about the whole goddamn movie. <sighs> it's I don't. It's there was no plot momentum. It's everything stumbled. It's oh. There's absolutely mm-hmm. no character development in this film whatsoever. I mean, not a single character has any kind of an arc I could get behind. Even like the worst. Of some of the other movies that I don't like, like the like the new Star Wars trilogy. I don't I'm not a big fan of the new Star Wars trilogy, but of all the characters in that that particular trilogy, like Kylo Ren has an arc I can understand and get behind. And 
you know, like I mentioned Robin Hood last week, multiple characters in that movie had arcs. I understood and get behind. No one in this movie was different from frame one than they were from frame 100. No, a hand, Dan, Dan. Flash Gordon was in a different tank top from the beginning of the movie oh, to the end. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I can't believe I missed it. I'm an idiot. Let's shut this podcast down because I'm a moron. Yeah, because clearly we just have no understanding of movies. I don't, yes. uh, you know, there's one little camera trick that I found on the internet that I thought was kind of an interesting way of visually storytelling in this movie. But other than that, it was garbage. You know, it's that, that spinning thing that the ca- the camera guy kept doing. No, it was at the very beginning of the film, he kind of films Ming from the bottom so that you have to look up to Ming. And then as the rebels start to gain more foothold, the camera keeps gradually going up to where you're even with Ming. And then towards the end of the movie, the camera's above Ming so that you're looking down on him. Oh, good catch. I didn't notice that because everything else was blinding me. We joked about this when we were watching, but it did feel like when they're trying to base a movie adapted from a book or a book series, but they try to condense it into one film. This felt like they took all the comic strips from the 1940s up until the 1980s and into one hour and a half long film. It's like you count people to know that source material. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. I know the comic strip that this scene was taken from. Yeah. Oh, I know what storyline those costumes are from. They're like, well, we got to get this costume in because it was part of this season and this this episode. Or yeah, this it's like there's trip. no there was no foreshad like there was no um like they all get behind Flash really quickly in this film and Flash is like their beacon of hope and he's their point of rebellion and like we're getting behind Flash and we're going to lead Flash wherever he goes, I'll follow and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, why? <laughs> like, yeah, he had, he had like a uh, jail room graffiti in his name. And it's like, he's been here for five minutes. Yeah, like if there was some kind of a prophecy that at the very beginning of the film, like they mentioned, Oh, an off worlder will save us from Ming someday. Okay. That, that understands why they would get behind Flash, why they would be so quick to get behind Flash because prophecy destiny says that this is our off-worlder that will lead us to salvation but they don't have anything like that or they least they don't mention it and i didn't catch it they, there's none of that in this film so why do they all get behind flash so quickly they didn't see him do anything of any significance other than stand up to ming and tell him to eat shit but then again they saw the other guy do that and he died so they didn't rally behind him well, it's like the Superman motion picture. They count the audience to be like, well, of course this makes sense because we've been familiar with this character for 40 years. Yeah. It's like, does it fit the narrative? No, but fanboy. Yay. He's yeah. flying the scooter from strip 5,760. I know this thing. Yay. Uh, but yeah, I think we all can agree that this movie was garbage. Yeah. And uh, if you like this movie, you should feel bad. But can we at least agree that Brian Blessed, Max von Sydow, and Timothy Dalton were the saving graces of this film? They yeah. were not saving graces. They were actors in this film. They did a passable performance. Yeah, they were... Um, <laughs> They were Morgan Freeman in Deep Impact. It's like, this is a bad film. These are great actors. They're doing a good job in a bad film. The rest of this movie's trash. The rest of this cast is trash. These guys are doing okay. You can see why out of all the actors and actresses in this film, those three still had a career post Flash Gordon. Yes. Yeah, they're like uh, the Natalie Portman and Ewan McGregor. and Yeah, uh, of, of the prequels. And, and I, think, I think it's... I'll just close. My last thought is that... I can't believe this movie was made after Star Wars A New Hope and after Star Trek The Motion Picture. It looks infinitely worse than both of those films. Oh, my God. I know. It's like it's like I said, I think this movie might have done better if The Empire Strikes Back didn't come back out six months before. Even if The Empire Strikes Back hadn't come out, this movie still looks worse than Star Wars in 77. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Mm. just take Star Wars out of the equation. If okay, let me put it like this. This movie would have been a success. If it was the only movie ever released. This movie would have been a success if it came out in 1970 and not 1980. No, I don't know. I don't know. I think this can't, I think the campy storytelling and the bright colors and all, and the familiarity with Flash Gordon because Star Wars doesn't exist yet would have made this movie a success. The fact that Star Wars existed and Star Trek existed 
and we're much better. I wouldn't say much better. Well, Star Wars is a much better film than this film. Star Trek The Motion Picture is a, well, it's more competently put together film than this one. I, I never <laughs> thought I'd hear myself saying that. So, uh, you know. Okay, I think 10 years is a little little uh, rough. I'd say if it came out in the 70s, because you still had uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Mm-hmm. Um but I would say to- five to ten years earlier, like 60, 65, maybe. Maybe. I don't, but I don't it's know. Just- competence level of the writers and the director. Or what can changes it from camp to shit and from shit to camp. So Yeah. So I think we all can agree that we probably would have had a better time tonight had we actually watched Flesh Gordon. It's yeah. Also whoever told George Lucas no, you can't make a Flash Gordon film. And he said, I'm going to go make my own film. I hope every year he sends that guy flowers and says, thank you for telling me not to make Flash Gordon because I'm a billionaire now and you made that movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, well, you know. Unfor- well unfortunately, that guy um, is dead now. But Tom, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't change anything. The fact that he's dead. It's just like, then he just walks up to his grave, lays a wreath on it and be like, I still made Star Wars yeah. and you're dead. I made a better Flash Gordon than you did. <laughs> so, but anyways, that's all I got to say about this film. I'm just going to go round and round in circles talking about how crap it was. Fun episode to record. I had fun watching it with you guys, but this movie sucked. I recommended this film three times. <laughs> three times I recommended this film. Oh, God. You almost wanted to make it a destination. One of the Q&A questions was like, oh, we could probably make Flash Gordon like a destination film if we wanted to do a bad movie as a destination film. So, no. (laughs) No. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and just veto that one right now. (laughs) But, hey, we got it out of our system and we'll never have to do it again. (laughs) So, there we go. Like COVID, we've been inoculated. (laughs) We've We've received the vaccine. Oh. We banged the psycho chick. Never yeah. again. Yeah. Never again. It's a miracle. It was the. Let's just hope we don't have the herp now. Second herpes reference tonight. <laughs> Boom! Drink. Okay, and that uh, that's tonight's episode. Uh, thank you, as always. You can find us on Spotify and t- iTunes, Amazon, or whatever you know podcasts are sold. Do they sell podcasts? If they do, go buy them. They actually do. Oh, cool. Well, you can find our podcast anywhere uh, that you can get your podcasts. Uh, regular episodes, Tuesdays at 6. Please like and subscribe. Uh, leave a review, a comment, or whatever on any of the media platforms that you use to get our podcast because it really helps us out. And be sure to also join us on our Discord channel along with everyone else. Link to the Discord is in the episode's description of our site at firepit.podbeat.com. You'll get notifications of new episodes and even better... It's a fun time. So join us by the fire and throw this log of a film into the pyre with us as well. And our email is mentioned back in the interspersal segment. um, If you want to send us a long message, um, well, longer message and get more in depth with it. I can guarantee you, as Tom says in the interspersal, uh, we probably aren't going to read it. But... uh, (laughs) We look forward to seeing that you are emailing us. Also, be sure to like our Facebook page. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Both of them are linked in this episode's description. So we always appreciate any kind of feedback we get. And I would like to give a special shout out to Peggy, the uh, OG friend of the channel. Thank you so much for listening. Your continued support is always appreciated and amazing. So, And also a special shout out to Rob. This journey was kind of for you. And we had to watch Flash Gordon because of it. So you're welcome. But thank you for your continued support in all seriousness. And I'd like to give a shout out to mm. our Facebook followers, Justin, Adigan, and Juz. Juz. Justin, Adigan, and Juz. Thank you for popping in, joining the swarths of people who have joined the Facebook page and helping to... You know, just keep these fire pits burning. Hopefully, uh, this movie kept you warm and us suffering through it. Because nothing, I don't know what else to say. Josh, save me from this. This movie hurts still so much. So, special shout out to my uh, little brother. It is, in fact, his birthday on the day of filming. We always have this running thing where I call him right at midnight. It's 1 a.m. our time. 
to uh, wish him a happy birthday. So, gonna do a podcast first and say happy birthday live on the air, on on air, even though we're not live. Hello. 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 Doesn't surprise me you're awake. <laughs> yeah, hold on. <laughs> so 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 happy birthday. Thanks, Doug. That's my birthday. Yes. And just for the record, I'm recording this for my podcast. Oh, you are. Yes. Yeah, I'm at a buddy's house. We're drinking. Okay, well I was the first, right? Huh? <laughs> to say happy birthday. First. Every year you are the first to tell Yeah, just birthday. remember last year you fucked it up and didn't do it on my birthday. I was drunk. Probably. Yeah, you're breaking a years long tradition too. And I just want to point out that uh, I am, in fact, doing it this year because, uh, you know, fuck you. That's why. <laughs> well, fuck you then. So I fuck you too, brother. I right, love you, bro. Love you too. All right, bye. All right, have a good night. You too. <laughs> and that's my family. That's my relationship with my brother. <laughs> I would like to give a, a special shout out because I, I promoted our podcast on my guild chat and my guild discord for my uh, Star Wars game. I was like, hey, I'd like to shout out somebody and nobody replied. So either I'm going to go ahead and just assume that uh, everybody in my guild um, saw my message, saw that I was watching Flash Gordon, and then they were like, I'm not going to reply <laughs> so I don't want a shout out on that then that episode. So I guess no shout outs for you guys. So so Dan, um, what are we going to slip into next week? Oh well, next week we are following the um, lead of Robbie Coltrane, who bugged the hell out of this film as fast as he possibly could. He's literally only in the beginning of this film. And we are going to Slipstream, a movie that I've never even heard of before you presented this list. And God help us if it's worse than this one. This is a low bar, but I'm, I don't, I'm afraid. Yeah, I was hoping that I would enjoy this movie, but now I'm afraid for next week. So let's slip into something a little more comfortable, please. You know what? It might be a bad film, but at least I don't have a lot of a bunch of people telling me that it's a cult classic because I'd never heard of that film before. So this is probably just a bad film. It's a bad film all around. Yes. But hey, hey, we get 80s Mark Hamill and 80s Bill Paxton. Come on. Just that combination alone. I don't know. Kind of hurts. We, we got 80s um, Timothy Dalton and 80s Brian Blessed Josh. I, but this is like nine years after this movie. Oh, Josh. I, I'm scared. So what's in the box? What's, what's in, in the, the box? In the, oh God! What's in the box? So be, please, please join us next week on our either terrifying adventure Fourier into the movie that is Slipstream. Oh God! Please don't <laughs> suck. <laughs> oh God! Well, you know what? We're in it for the long haul, ladies and gentlemen. So until then, I've been Dan. I've been Tom. <laughs> and I've been Josh. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Stay safe out there. Oh, God, my prostate. Again. Well... I guess we can say that we caused the annihilation of an entire alien species now. Oh, God. Genocide was definitely not on my to-do list today. God, I never thought we'd get out of there alive. You know, it was going so well, too. Our skips, they were, uh, they were topical. We had good Earth-based pop culture references, you know, especially towards the end, and I thought everybody was having a blast. They got to the interspersal. And then, oh my god. Oh my god, the slaughter. It was... This was your fault, you know. No. No, you're the one who threw in space dysentery. Come on, let's be honest. It got laughs. But no, no, no. You had to go and shove Rodney Dangerfield into every freaking joke. No respect. No respect at all. Oh my god, stop that! Why are you loud? Why are we loud? Oh, God, my head. Why do I feel like Jenna Hayes? How, how are you doing? I mean, what, what's it like having an alien collective inside of you? That's what she said.
Stop, 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 stop. I'm gonna go lie down now. Okay, well, I guess that's all done. I guess we still have to do our own. Wait, what? what's with all the tissue paper? All these open tabs. Oh, Jesus Christ, Tom! Yeah, it was a while before they beat me up. I, uh, had a bit of time to spare. Gross!